Good morning, stampers and crafters. Thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel today. It's Maria Russell here. I'm back today for catscrappiness.com and I am going to show you how I made this card. And just a little disclaimer, I'm not going to show you any coloring for today's video and that is only because First of all, I wanted to keep this video short because I have a house full right now and my kids are visiting for the holidays and the house is pretty noisy and full so it's hard to sort of take some time to film and edit videos quietly so I apologize for that. So I hope you understand that also I wanted to spend as much time as possible with my kids and that's the reason why this video is going to be a little shorter than normal so there isn't going to be any Copic coloring on this video but I just wanted to point out that just the little thing that you see here that make it makes it look more realistic I actually had to use my colorless blender to take some of the colors out and then I colored it back in with just a lighter brown Copic marker and I wanted the bottles to look more realistic and I think I achieved that. But I'm going to showcase the Holiday Spirit Stamp Set and Dies by Avery L. Available at Cat Scrappiness, of course. And this Die Cuts and More stencil. This is called the Brick Background or something like that. This is actually huge. This is 8 by 8 and of course there wouldn't be any Christmas card without Cat's Crappiness Deck the Halls sequin mix. I really love the sequin mix. So those are the items that I have used for this card. And if you guys are interested to see how I made it, then please keep watching. I started out by coloring my images using my Copic markers and I'm just showing you here the details that I added using my gel pen. And as I explained earlier, I used my colorless blender to take away some of the colors on the images and then later on I had to color them back in with a lighter brown. I'm going to use my painter's tape here to figure out where I want to put the stencil background and I'm just lining up my images here and I finally figured out that I wanted a little bit more on top so I'm going to use my painter's tape and then going to use my stencil to stencil in the background. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz Spun Sugar Distress Ink. This is one of my favorite colors of Distress Ink because you can actually make it either lighter or darker depending on how much color you want to use. And you will see here in just a second that I will be using my sponge instead of the blending tools from Tim Holtz. I'm not very good at it and I prefer to use the sponge when I'm distressing the background or using a stencil to color my card base here because I am not very good with the distress tools so I have more control with the color by using the, the sponge and I'm either rubbing it or I'm actually dabbing the color on the image here with the stencil and you will see that in just a second that's what I'm doing here I'm kind of pouncing it a little bit to add more colors and get a, a little bit of a deeper pink And since my painter tape here is not overly saturated with the sponge sugar, I'm going to reuse that again to color the bottom of my card panel. I'm using Tim Holtz Evergreen Bow, and I'm going to distress the bottom part of my card panel here. And I'm really sorry that I was out of frame for a while. I didn't realize this while I was filming, but you will be able to see it in just a few minutes here. And I'm go it's a bit splotchy, so I'm going to solve that by covering it with sequins, and I think it turned out okay. And now I'm just going to use my stamping tool to stamp my sentiment. I'm just lining up my images here so I know the position of the sentiments for my card. 
And now I'm actually ready to assemble my card. I'm going to use my Scotch foam adhesive and my stamp runner to adhere the images on my front panel. And just to finish off the design of the card, I'm going to use my one of my favorite sequin mixes by Cat Scrappiness. This is called Deck the Halls. And I'm going to use my multimedia matte adhesive. This is a really strong adhesive to adhere the holly. And then use my crystal katana tool. This is one of my favorites and this is also available at Cat Scrappiness. And this just makes things easier to adhere sequins like this to finish off the design of the card. So I hope you guys enjoyed the process video and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. I'm really sorry that this video is a bit short and it's the holidays and I want to spend more time with my kids at the moment. So I hope you guys understand. But I hope you found this video helpful and got inspired today. And I will see you on my next crafting project. Bye for now and Merry Christmas.